Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The series Power follows the ups and downs of a New York nightclub owner who's also an influential drug kingpin. Today, I'm going to chat about the upcoming fifth season with Lila Loren, who plays the bold and sometimes frustrating special agent, Angela Valdez. But before we bring her out, let's check out a clip. Is it out of place to ask why the head of criminal for the entire Eastern District of New York was at a lowly local murder scene? Excuse me? Blanca Rodriguez, NYPD Internal Affairs. I'm working the Detective Raymond Jones case. I was called in because Jones was an undercover working narcotics, but his flop is filled with fenced items that he never reported, which is a big no-no. I saw you leaving Jones's flop last night, and I said to myself, self? Not every day you see $400 stilettos at a potentially dirty undercover cop's bloody last known. So I looked at the sign out sheet and noticed you weren't on it. Little violation of NYPD protocol. It was an oversight. Why were you there? I'm just asking because maybe I'm missing something. You know, save me a couple steps in my investigation. Like you, I thought I'd check him out myself, see what kind of witness he would be. You ever spoken with Raymond Jones? Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance. He came onto my radar shortly before you went missing. I'm late for a meeting, so. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Miss Valdez. Que bueno ver una boricua como jefa. Thank you. Everybody, put your hands together for Lila Lauren. How are you doing today? I'm excellent. Yeah. Sorry, I got to get used to this. That's OK. I didn't realize you live in New York, so you just had to just jump on, you know. Yeah, I just hopped in a car. Yeah, came not, over. Too, not too far. So we had the, uh, some of your castmates here yesterday, Rutimi, Naturi, and Lala. This fifth season looks like it's going to be a doozy. Ooh, it is a doozy. Um, it's, it's, I feel like um, the seasons of power sort of have rhythms. Like there's one season that's like a setup and the next one's like a spike. And then this one is sort of a setup and that it's exploring all of these like different themes. And there's a lot going on this season, particularly in the wake of Reina's death. And so there's a lot, a lot of drama. Yeah, so in, in season four, I think, like you're saying, it was really a setup. Like, you started seeing all these pieces getting put together. You know, James was in prison for a good part of it. Right. Then he gets out. Then then Raina is murdered. I know you don't want to give us any spoilers, but what can we kind of expect in this premiere of season five and then going forward? Yeah, so... Um you know, kind of at least with Angela's character, like what the clip that you saw, um, and also like Monique Kernan, who who plays uh, the the cop who's questioning me, she's awesome. Uh, she is Blanca Rodriguez, I believe is the, her character's name, and um, Angela is in in like really really uh, hot water because uh, because of the information she gave Tasha to help Tasha find her son, and then when she She's worried that like Ghost is going to murder Ray Ray, and so she runs over there to try to stop it, not realizing A, that she's too late, and B, it's already a crime scene. And she gets kind of caught there, and so now she's an accomplice to murder, and she's trying to backpedal. So that's what we're gonna, that's what she's dealing with, season five. And for those who maybe aren't familiar with the show, give us a little description of Angela because she, for me, is just so full of contradiction, but also there's something really relatable about her too for me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I call her sexy Gestapo. Um, now Angela, the, so I think the thing that makes her really relatable is she, she comes from Jamie's world, but it's like she took the other path and but in doing that, because she was so in love with him when she went away to school, she basically cut off the piece of her that loved. And so for her, ambition and success was a really great antidote at work. It made you feel like your life's popping. But then she runs into him by accident, and all of a sudden she realizes that she's like starving for this mm -hmm. old love that she had. And in some ways, there are two characters like trying to find home again. They're trying to go back to the simpler time, and they can't because of the decisions that they've made. So Angela, she, I, I look at, like, the harder she has, the, the, outer, the harder of the outer shell she has, the more fragile and sensitive 
she is on the inside because usually the people with the toughest fronts are usually protecting something very um, delicate. And I think that's what makes her so contradictory. And you can see her vulnerability yeah. with him the most, obviously. Yeah, I really try to you know, play that up, that yeah. kind of girlishness. Like for as mature as she is at work, she's kind of as immature in her um, emotional dating life. Yeah. But I do love that because, you know, you can be a feminist and be a really strong woman, but there's still things that kind of throw you off. And I think a lot of the times we like to think that women have to be strong and they can't show these flaws. But we also saw it with like Olivia Pope where we have these very high powered women, but there's still a part of them We're that's human. human. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's so important to show those two kind of parts of Yeah. Because otherwise then you're just playing a caricature of what you think a strong person is. You know, um, and also, you know, there's a difference between our like rational thought of how we'd like to think of our, of our ideas and then the reality of who we are in front of a man or a woman that we like. There's something very uh, primal and um, irrational and all of our lofty ideas just sort of sometimes get washed away when, when we have a crush on someone. And with Angela and Jamie, though, it has the extra layer that uh, he's married. So that wow. makes it <laughs> yeah. extra complicated. And we've seen them kind of go up and down that roller coaster. The fans have a lot of feelings about Angela because of that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's really funny, though, because like power is not a show for moralizing. <laughs> You know, like Tommy like choked out his girlfriend with his like bare hands and like Kanan like, you know, shot a grandmother. And if those characters are somehow lovable, the fact that like scorched earth because Angela had an affair, like it almost tells on what's going on like in the viewer rather than the character. <laughs> so you're like, OK, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, affairs are a really scary thing for our population, but they've been happening from like the beginning of time and they're not going anywhere like from the existence of the institution of marriage, people have been having affairs. Um, yeah, I always, you know, and that's what makes it fun as an actor to get to play that because it's not real, yeah. you know? <laughs> I get to go and have an affair and like people get to murder people on scene. Like there's blood, like the fake blood. And then um, you go home and you go to sleep. Right. And you get to be a good person because it's all pretend. You have no problem sleeping in real life, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like I prefer to keep all this drama in my pretend world. Like my real life is, is oh, it's so tame. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, though. I mean, uh, it's also really fun to watch you and Amari, your chemistry. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, it really does translate. Do you guys agree? Like, I really, I know that they're in this complicated dynamic, but I'm also kind of rooting, rooting for it because it feels so really. Yeah, lovely. we really worked on. So we, he and I, we got really lucky because our processes are really similar. And so a lot of times, as an actor, everybody has like different ways that they approach the material. And he and I actually work really intuitively. Um, I'm maybe a little bit. I study, I'm more of a like a study nerd and then I get and play and he's just kind of more off the cuff. Um, but we have like in real life, we have like a, a little kid chemistry. Like we like to mess with each other. We're like, and so when you add then the adult romance onto it, it gives us this really nice uh, uh, pl playful dynamic that a lot of, I feel like, uh, doesn't get shown in all, maybe a lot of romantic couples because it's all like adult and we're like, we uh, we try to hold on to the goofiness of how they were as as kids because so much of about the relationship is history. Yeah. And you mentioned you you guys are kind of playful on set. It's such I would imagine like the like you said there's like murder and there's all this stuff. What is it the feeling like on set? Like who's funny? Who likes who's, to dance? Who likes to sing? Like so you know it's interesting because you know when you watch Power, I spend so many of my days with my FBI team, the FBI guys, uh, Shane Johnson, Sung, uh, Sung Kang, uh, Ty Jones. Those dudes are hilarious, and a lot of times like people ask us like what kind of pranks that you do. Power, our shooting schedule is like 16, 17, 8 hour, 18 hours a day sometimes. Well, that's with hair and makeup. And so there's a sense of like, I don't want to pull a prank because the crew will kill me if I waste any of their time. Um, so it's a lot of like really inappropriate humor and joking. Um, or maybe we'll pl play little jokes on each other on the turnaround. But like, 
the blooper reels of like actors, you know, gagging other actors. I'm just like, what show is that? Because we don't have time for that. Um, so Shane Johnson, who plays Cooper Sacks, who plays a, t a dick on television, is like the nicest but funniest, quickest wit of anybody I have ever met. Um, it's it's like he needs to explore that because he's incredible, um, and it's not something you would expect from his character. Maybe he'll do some comedy next. He should, and then of Joseph Sakura Shakura is actually hilarious. Um, Naturi is real. I mean, you've seen Naturi. She's like, she knows how to ham it up. She like, we're all funny, I think, in our own way. You should just do one episode of Power that's just like a fun, funny one. Like Power the Music. Yeah, like nobody dies. Yeah. Just everybody breaks out into song, Aww. like walking through the Queens. I think I'm the only one on the show that can't sing. Oh. I love to sing, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> I can't sing either. Uh, you mentioned Naturi and her character, Tasha. Obviously, you guys are at odds a lot because your character yeah, is sleeping I with mean, her husband. <laughs> slight conflict. It happens. <laughs> conflict of interest. Right. Um, but what does that relationship look like going forward into season five? Because after the death of Reyna, her daughter, you know, you're sort of... Yeah, Tasha, you know, comes to me in this really vulnerable moment of Tariq going missing. And it's one of my actually favorite scenes in that... Because I feel like it's true with life. Like, you can hate somebody, and then a situation can happen that it, how you feel about them, them doesn't matter anymore because the stakes of what's going on is so much bigger. And so in that moment, these two women are looking at each other, and there's this mutual empathy of, like, oh, shit, this, these kids have nothing to do with our adult BS of, of, you know, our drama. And so they both put that aside uh, ironically, that's what get Ange gets Angela into such deep trouble. So because of that setup, as much as these women would like to maybe not see each other, they're sort of stuck. If you look at like those circumstances, their fates are now tied to each other. Because if Angela goes down, they all go down. And if they all go down, Angela goes down. So there's going to be some interesting like you know, teamwork happening. And that's for all the people who like to hate on Angela. I feel like, you know, she's in this position that's complicated inherently because of her job. And then totally. obviously her. Yeah. So it's like, what decisions would you make in those situations? I don't know. Which is why I get really connected to her storyline. Because I was like, I don't know what I would do, you know? And I think that's part of what brings Well, and in. actually, the, the thing that she should do, like, you know, break up with Jamie and go to therapy. Like... <laughs> There wouldn't be a show, like, if, if, if all the characters on Power made the right, like, good decisions, we wouldn't have a series. Right. Like, if they all watched Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Do you remember, like, that comic strip called, like, Family Circus? I hated it as a kid. Like, it made me so mad because it was sort of always, like, this is what you're supposed to do. And I'm like, this isn't funny. This isn't funny. There's too much resolution. Yeah. You're like, no, yeah. I want some conflict. Yeah, so I'm always like, Power is not Family Circus. On that topic, what character do you most identify with in the cast? Or, like, yeah. So, like, for me, Tasha, whenever I look at Tasha, I'm like, oh, I get that. Like, family first. Oh. You know, kind of sacrificing in that way. What character do I most identify with? I mean, it's so hard because when you're steeped in one, uh, like, I've been, you know, steeped in Angela's perspective. Also, half of them murder people all the time. So it's yeah. like hard to identify with that, I'm sure. But just, like, baseline who they are is, like, people, you know? Like, Tommy's super loyal and, like... Right. I mean, but he's also, like, a psychopathic Yeah, murderer. yeah, that he kills people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question. I think I actually... Like, I, I identify a lot with Angela's heart. I wish I could be manipulative. I don't know how to be manipulative like her. Like, my parents were such like straightforward people that like I just didn't <laughs> learn that skill that's probably good <laughs> it is and it isn't because like when people play like political games I get my I get my I get handed you can to say me. ass it's okay oh I can okay sweet <laughs> um you saw me struggling <laughs> ah, <laughs> tiny <laughs> um you know I guess I would say ah uh, Maybe Paz, actually. Yeah. Or Lakeisha. Okay. 
Yeah, because Lakeisha's good. You know, she's like a good friend. She's a yeah. good friend and a good girl, and she like wants. She doesn't want drama, and yeah, and like we see what happens to her. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. But yeah, actually, I was. I'll say Lakeisha. Okay, cool. Yeah. So one special thing about Power is how I think how surprising it's been. Because viewers show up for this show consistently. And it is one of few shows that season after season... Keeps gaining. Keeps gaining viewers. Yeah. And I think I read that the fourth season had an average of 9.4 million viewers per episode, which is huge for any network, especially well, cable. And I still think there's so much more ground to tread because it's still like one of the most watched shows that so many people still don't know about. Exactly. So the amount of people that are like, wait, what show is that? And it, but what's fascinating is that happens to me because there's so many platforms and so much content. And so I'm sort of excited to see how, like, how many viewers it gets. Um, but sorry, your question was- I was just wondering, like, what do you think makes it so special in that way that it can continue to gain viewers after four seasons? So, I mean, besides the fact that, that uh, you know, people of color need stories that reflect them. Like, we actually, as humans, need stories. Like, that's one of the things that- that we've done since the beginning of time is tell stories about ourselves. And to, so finally to have a cast that starts to look like so much of the rest of the population in the States. Um, but more like moving past that, so many people talk about power almost like causing this anxiety in them where they can't breathe. And part of it is the structure where the audience is always knows more information than all of the characters. So it's actually told like a horror story. You know, like, don't go in the closet. Oh, no, they're going in the closet. Like, so I think part of what really grabs people is the um, the way Courtney Kemp and the writers have decided to tell the story. And to that point, I think we, you know, going into season three, you guys are already picked up for season four. Like, and now we know that going into season five, you're already picked up for season six, yeah. which is amazing and doesn't happen very often. No. So I, do you think that kind of gives the writers some room to breathe and to really sort All of... All of us. Yeah, formulate those stories in an yeah. authentic well, way. You know, the thing is, though, is these days they have to do so much legwork in the beginning. Like when Sha when Power first got pitched, they had to pitch five seasons worth. Oh. So like they're not, yeah. So they're, they're, they don't like, they already know where the story's going. It's a matter of, uh, you've noticed Power like really burns through plot. So and obviously they add things or tweak things or, you know, like um, stretch things out. But in terms of the basic storytelling, uh, Courtney knows what's up. That's amazing. And before we go to some audience questions, what are your hopes for Aunt Angela? So this is really interesting. I don't, I don't, uh, it's one of those things I think audiences hope. For me, because of, I, I almost feel like I can't, because as an actor, my job is to be curious about whatever the writers give you, because I'm not in control of anything Angela says and does, or even wears, for that matter. Um, maybe I get to pick my hairstyle that day. Um, so my job is to be curious and not judge it and be like, how does she get here? So, oh shit, she's doing this and this and this. Well, what what's going on that I can connect with to make this as real and human as possible? And so I sort of, don't hope. I just am more like, let's wait and see what happens. Cause, because if you start having like, oh, I really want her to go in this direction and she goes in the other direction, that's a really hard, uh, then you're resistant into stepping into that flow and it just messes up with, for me, it messes with my process. I hope she goes to therapy. No, I'm joking. I mean, all of us. <laughs> I think, we all need a little therapy. Wouldn't it really be funny, like, Tommy, Angela, Tasha, and Ghost, with Tariq, <laughs> all in therapy, and Kanan? That would be really fulfilling, but also not fulfilling at all. I think there needs to be a little, like, um, what is it, like, between two ferns, or, like, <laughs> funny or die, with, like, us all in therapy. Everybody gets self-actualized in the same mm -hmm. moment, and then the yeah. show, that would end the show, though. Tommy so. becomes born again, <laughs> starts drinking coconut water. Doing Pilates. All right, let's go to the audience really quick. Who's got the first one? Okay. You love ghosts, right? Uh, Angela loves ghosts, yes. <laughs> this is Leela. 
<laughs> hey, I love, I love cats <laughs> and gardening and cooking, all that stuff. Okay, so are you going to help him to keep him out of jail before you be with him? or? So I think, like, in some ways, if you look at the where the season ends, Angela has to help her self stay out of jail. So it's almost like her survival is... So she can stay out of jail. Maybe she can keep everyone else. But there's, like, they're all all of their fates are tied together. So it's like, she can say like, yes, I'm trying to keep you out of jail. But but if he goes to jail, she goes to jail. So it's like, it's, uh, yes. Yes, she is going to, to try to stay out of jail. She is not like a Tasha where it's like, oh, I'm guilty. Send me to jail. No, Angela's like, uh-uh. Not going in because she's a fed. She'll get killed. Yeah. She's got a lot more to lose. Yeah. I was seeing a clip of like when Tasha was asking Lakeisha for help. Do you think she's going to help Tasha? Lakeisha? God, you know, I hope Lakeisha um, doesn't, but she's so loyal. Because, like, Tasha's really used Lakeisha. Yeah. Like, she's really kind of exploited that friendship. Um, you know, it's that thing with family, right? It's like even when you know someone's doing you dirty. So I can't answer that, but I hope she doesn't. Keisha wants to get clean, but I don't see it happening. You know, unfortunately, I feel like, like you said, everybody's face are so intertwined. It's well, like, they keep she like, can't really get out, you know. It's, they wants. keep like doing stuff to her business without know. knowing, <laughs> you know, she's like, wait, what? She's the last one to know. <laughs> then Tommy's like, well, that's just collateral damage. It's like, come on. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Hello, Leia. Hi. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question. Two of them. Um, I never watched Power before last season. I just binge watch all one through four. <laughs> Loved it. I'm on the Power bandwagon, um, one of my favorite shows. Um, from the beginning, I seen Angela take an arc of being strictly by the book and here and there more or less helping out ghosts on very small occasions. Last season, at the end of it, where she made that call to Tasha and everyone got connected, as you said, they're all in, into it now. Um, where do you think her character is going to go this season is my first question. And second, who is your most hated character on the show? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so where I think Angela is going to go this season is kind of like what I was saying before, like really trying to keep herself out of the crosshairs of this woman right here who's investigating. And uh, in turn... Um, you know, also try to keep Tariq out of jail because he really is the guilty party. So I think that's what her sort of efforts are going to be. And, you know, one of the great things about, funny things about power is, like, whenever something really good happens to a character, that's when I get really worried because that's when stuff's about to go really badly. So, like, she gets this promotion and then, like, you know, <laughs> no, you can never really enjoy it because you're like, oh, oh crap. Um, and she's not in a environment where she gets support so like cooper Sachs, mock all of her working guys they're just they're like circling her like sharks so she's definitely in hot hot water um who is my most hated character on the show um i don't like it's really hard i have a really hard time thinking of favorites or of anything but probably Tariq in that i I have, uh, like, my parents were really strict with me growing up, and I'm, like, my, you know, I would have, I would have disciplined that boy a lot more harshly a lot earlier on, um, but kind of just the, he, Michael Rainey Jr. does such a great job of sort of encapsulating the narcissism of that age and of like, you know, I don't know. So I know he's sort of innocent, but it's like also at that point where you're like. You're in high school now. Like, you're old enough to understand what's going on. Um, so, yeah. I can't stand I'm like, he's so dumb. And it just, he makes me so mad. He's so dumb. He's the dumbest shit. And he just frustrates me. So, I'm with you. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> in solidarity. All right. We have one more. Hey, how you doing? Um, one of the things I love about you know, the character you play is um, she's strong, she's focused. And like you say, there's a vulnerability to it. So, there's a kind of immaturity and her personal life, how she deals with um, ghosts, which must be 
great as an actress to play. Uh, so the question I have, is there any other aspects of Angela's character as an actress that you have loved exploring over the various seasons? So, yeah, the different aspects of her. There, in, in some ways of, of, like, what I try to do with Angela is find her psychological hub. Um, and... She's a character that, like, there, she's often in a lot of situations that it's sort of from one extreme to the other. So the, the other the other aspects are sort of like how there's some scenes that were really fun, like how does Angela deal with children? Like when you saw her with, like, the kids and she's like, she can't be her tough self. Like, I don't know if you remember, like there's a scene where she's just like, oh my God, playing video games. So like, that's a fun, when, when Angela's baffled and doesn't know what to do, you know, cause she's very adept in her work world. You know, there's her love life with Jamie. And then it's fun to explore those sort of gray areas where she, she can't use her regular tool, toolbox. Um, uh, also, the sort of complex feelings that she has with Tasha, because like Angela does not hate Tasha. Tasha hates Angela. It doesn't go in the other direction. There's that sense of guilt underneath the selfish decision to be with a man who's married. Um, and so navigating her kind of distrust of Tasha and yet at the same time like an, her empathy for her has been really fun and you see next season you know the the sort of beginning of them kind of having to work together because Ghost Ghost's going kind of crazy he's like you know both of these women are like we both have this dude's number maybe we should not discuss some things with him so we're gonna see that and that's that's a really fun like kind of tight rope to walk. And one last question. Hi, Layla. Hi. I love you. You look beautiful, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, I have two questions. One question is, um, are you going to get back with Jamie? And my other question is, are you going to jail at the end of season five? I hope not, because <laughs> it seems like I know you're going to help Tasha and all of that, but I don't want you to end up in jail. I mean, so these are amazing questions. I wish I could answer them, but we're going to have to see how the season plays out because, you know, I can't give any of that sort of stuff away. How let's say that, you know, I think Reina's death changes a lot of things for Angela. All of her anger towards Jamie sort of gets replaced by this, like, holy shit, you just lost your daughter. Um... And the other thing, though, is like sh there's no secrets about who he is anymore. So that's a really interesting starting place for uh, them to meet. Now, they inevitably will meet because his son just murdered somebody. So I can't answer if they'll get back together or if Angela will succeed in staying out of jail. But you're right to be worried because <laughs> this is power and uh, bad stuff happens all the time. But really quickly, can you tell us if Angela goes to jail? <laughs> <laughs> but really, but, well, it looks like we're all going to have to watch season five to find out. Luckily, we don't have to wait that much longer. Season five of Power debuts on July 1st on Stars. Yes, on Sunday. Sunday. And they Make sure you check the time. it out. Everybody, they changed the time to 8 p.m. So it's 8 no longer nine. It's an hour earlier. All right. Get that barbecue going. <laughs> Invite your friends over. Oh, we're going to be watching. Maybe all some right. Xanax. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Give it up for Lula.